High Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Stand at Hogtie. While I go in and get him, Sprax. Come on, Charlie, out to get. Uh, okay, okay. I ain't gonna make no trouble. Damn right you ain't, Charlie. Lou Jacker. So it's you. Yeah, Charlie. Sorry to have to do this. Oh, no. He wasn't such a bad guy, was old Charlie. Pity we had to waste him. A uh, real nice guy. Chuck his body down the hill, will you, Specs? I got the truck started. <laughs> A thousand color TV sets won't be too hard to sell. Jeff Slater, Captain Jeff Slater of the Highway Patrol, Goodwood County, Tennessee. This is a real tough area, believe me, even when it's peaceful. Not long ago, we were hit by a wave of truck hijackings. My men were doing the best to stamp it out, but it's one hell of a big area. Remote, pretty mountainous. Besides, the folks living there don't take kindly to policemen. They think all we're doing is snooping on their illegal drinking habits. <laughs> yeah, this is moonshine country. Anyhow, a nice little guy I knew, Albie Dickinson, was the hardest hit by these hijackings. He lost three of his eight trucks in a single month. Insurance company would do his cover. His best drivers left him. Well, he can't be blamed for that either, because two of their buddies had been shot in cold blood by these road pirates. Charlie Oaks, kindly old guy, was the latest victim. Charlie's death hit Albie pretty hard, because they'd been good friends. Well, Albie's second-in-command was an able young guy called Wally Newton. Oh, he could drive a truck as well as anyone could. Morning after Charlie's killing, they were talking it over in Albie's office. Tell you, Wally, the townsfolk get their hands on Charlie's killer. They'll be lynching like we ain't seen this century. Yeah, and I'll be there to put a noose over the rat's head. It's someone here in Vickers. You can be sure of that. Someone who knows our regular schedules. Which is why my outfit's the one being most hit. Yeah, and he knows you can't afford arm protection like the bigger truckers. You have a drink, Wally? Yeah, thanks. The yeah, trouble is, the cops always seem to be in the wrong place when it happens. I know what you're thinking, Wally, but they're not in on it. It's this damn awful country we have to cross. The lousy roads and poor communication. Yeah, in short, the hijack is paradise. Well, I reckon the load I'm carrying tonight's a target for him. I mean, just look at the manifests. Car radios, video recorders. You ain't gonna be alone tonight, Wally. I'm riding shotgun. We don't stop for nothing between here and Carrollton. Yeah, same time, same route? Sure, why not? If I can pick off a couple, they'll maybe think twice about taking one of my trucks in the future. Well, I ain't sure it's a good idea, Alvy. I mean, why tempt them? I reckon we could take Route 85 out of town and join up with the interstate on the other side of Hogtie Bridge. You chicken, Wally? Oh, no, I'm, I'm just practical. You can't expect me to play hero for a lousy 400 bucks a week. Oh, so that's it. Money. Now, don't get me wrong, Albie. I mean, the money's okay for driving a truck, but... Well, don't forget me and Jill's getting hitched in a few weeks. You put yourself in my place, huh? Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, Wally, we'll take Route 85. If the hijackers are after your load tonight, they won't expect us to go that way. Route 85 must be the worst road in the entire U.S. of A. (laughs) 
More coffee, honey? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. And another chunk of that blueberry pie. Well, help yourself to the pie. Thanks. You want to make your parcel of it for the trip? I can flash some coffee, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, pie and coffee both. You'll be back tomorrow? Ah, uh, no, the, uh, the day after. We're bringing a load back from Carrollton. Who's we? You taking a passenger? Well, I got a pretty valuable load, so, uh, Albie's riding shotgun. Oh, I'm glad he's getting off his butt and doing something useful. You were expecting the jackers to hit you? No, 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 just taking no chances. We're taking Route 85 down to Hogtie Bridge so as to avoid hassles. You watch it, huh, Wally? You hear me now? Yeah. I don't want nothing to happen to you. Oh, come on. Quit worrying, Jill. I'll be okay. What about the cops? Are they going to check you out along the route? Well, highway patrols promised to have a car on the interstate junction near Carrollton. Spoke to Captain Slater myself. Uh, I reckon the cops are taking a cut from the jackers. Well, that's what I thought until I had a talk with Slater. But he told me he's got an idea who's behind the hijackings. Oh, who? Well, look, uh, keep it under your Sunday bonnet, but uh, it's a guy called Lou Jagger. Oh. Yeah, this guy was fired from Western Truck Line just about the time the hijacking started. He was a driver, and uh, he knows all the routes and truck lines in Tennessee. He ain't worked since he was fired, but he still seems to be loaded. Well, the cops cabled Washington today to see if the FBI's gotten anything on him. Is that a fact? Yeah. Yeah, they should get a reply tomorrow. Hey, gee, look, it's it's, it's five already. I said I'd meet Albie at 5.30. Wait, let me wrap this pie for you. Hey, I've been thinking, honey. Let's take our honeymoon in New Orleans instead of Niagara, huh? Oh, if you like. Whatever you want. You know, I mean, who wants to sit watching water falling down a cliff all day? <laughs> New Orleans has got atmosphere. You know, <laughs> Bourbon Street, jazz clubs. Oh, let's talk about it next time, huh? You better hurry before Albie gets robbed. Yeah, okay. Mm. Mm. See you Friday, honey. Like I said, honey, don't take no chances. I told Albie I ain't paid to be a hero. Bye now. Bye. Well, now, don't that beat all. Yeah, who's that? It's me, Jill. They're on to you, Lou. Highway Patrol. Wally's just told me. Hey, look, kid, you better zap over here. I don't trust phones, okay? Just give me ten minutes, honey. <sighs> well, hey, well, what's that you got there, Albie? Just you ripped me a big hunk of blueberry pie. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> well, so did Jill. Well, looks like we're going to spend the trip filling our faces with blueberry pie. Uh, I brought a flask of coffee, too. I got half jack of the best moonshine in the state. Straight from old box girls still. How? Look at there, Wally. Between the seats. You like my shotgun? Gee, you call that a shotgun? What is it? A Stutzy machine gun. Where'd you get a thing like that? <laughs> I got friends, boy. Maybe Route 85's okay, but I ain't taking no chances. I'm going to blast out anything that comes between us and the road ahead. So, the highway patrol's gotten suspicious, huh? Well, I guess it wouldn't be long before they put two and two together and came up with Lou Jagger. It's time we moved on, Lou. I agree with Specs. We've made a pile, so it's time we took us a long vacation... Besides, I was getting too darn attached to that big lug, Wally Newton. I hope you didn't let him paw you. What do you take me for? I can be very prim when I want to be. <laughs> yeah, which ain't too often. Anyhow, the guy served his purpose. He's got a mouth like a railroad tunnel. Real mine of information. So, uh, what's the next move, Lou? I reckon we should make this last hit, Specs. Yeah, look, didn't Jill warn us that Albie's riding shotgun tonight? He's going to fight like a dog and a bug. Yeah, maybe, but they got a mighty valuable load there. Easy to lay off with Kenny Lomas. He'll take the lot and pay cash on the nail. Okay, Lou, I'll go along with that. But no killing, huh? I got a weak stomach and a sneaking regard for Wally and Albie. They've both been good to me. And Wally's got a bad time coming when he knows I've run out on him. You hear that, Specs? Ain't she got a heart of gold, huh? <laughs> 
Okay, honey, if I don't create a big fuss, we'll leave them alive. That's a promise, okay? Okay, Lou. Let's hit the road. Without a doubt, Route 85 is the worst road man ever made. Since it was opened during World War II, only strangers and daredevils ride it. Sure as hell, there's no road for a 90-foot truck. Like I told you earlier, this is mighty hilly country, and Route 85 winds like a rattle in a pot of moonshine. There are holes in it big enough to hide a sedan, sheer drops of 100 feet or more at the sides. My mind, hijackers were a better risk that night. And as for Hogtie Bridge, oh, that was a real killer. It spanned a wide gorge, built in the last century for the hauling of timber. Sure, it could take the weight of an ordinary automobile, even the average farm truck, but a highway juggernaut, oh, that's a different thing altogether. Watch for that hemp in bend ahead. We're just coming up to it. Yeah, I know, Albie. Nearly went over it one day when I took Jill picnicking. Huh. Thanks for cheering me up. The brakes failed on my station wagon. But I reckon the brakes on this thing ain't going to fail. Uh, it's been known to happen. <laughs> Look who's being cheerful now. Well, another couple of hours and it'll be getting light. Should be getting out of the interstate by then. Yeah. I reckon we'll hit the junction in about 90 minutes. Hogtie Bridge is only a mile ahead. Yeah, the bridge. That's one part of the trip I ain't looking forward to. Heard the trucks going over it before. Never one like this. Well, it's always the first time, Albie. Watch that damn road, Wally. We're running into the bend. Keep hold to the raid. I'll do the driving and you do the shotgunning, okay? It's my trip, remember? And it's my neck, so you just sit back and relax. Uh, they're running late. Should have been here an hour ago. Maybe they had trouble down the road away. Mm, give them another 30 minutes, and then we'll drive along and see. I still think we should block the road with our car in case they try to run past. Too damn risky, Specs. When they come around that hairpin bend, they might have had time to pull up. That way we end up with a wrecked car and a wrecked truck. In short, a disaster. Well, I'll tell you, Specs, when they come out of the hairpin, they'll be doing no more than 10. It'll be a cinch. Up ahead, you see? The loom of headlights? Yeah, that's them. You got everything clear, Specs? Yeah, sure. I don't like it, but I got it. I'll sit in the car and wait. What for? I don't want Wally to see me. I couldn't stand to see his expression when he knows I'm mixed up in this. <laughs> and married to me, huh? Okay, kid. Go make yourself scared. Okay, okay, slow and easy like. Close your eyes, Albie, it'll make you feel better. Hell, I'm sorry I let you talk me into taking this route. I should have known better. Uh, here we go, around the last bend. See, ain't that an automobile on the side of the road ahead, hey? I told you to close your eyes. Ah, oh, put that gun down. It's only some crash car. And Look out, Wally! What? Two men running out from the sides, and they're wrong. Lou Jagger and Spex Tiger darted out of cover and jumped to the slow-moving truck, each of them carrying a wrench in one hand and a gun in the other. Lou reached the running board first and swung the wrench. Keep going, Wally! Pull up or you're dead man! For his age, Alby moved fast. He jabbed the butt of his weapon in the loose face and pointed the gun at the door where Specs was now clinging. Okay, Wally, put your foot down, boy. The way ahead was now straight. Wally jabbed down his foot and gunned the heavy truck forward. Both Lou and Specs had fallen from the running board. Hey, hey, he's in that time. We clear, boy. Yeah. Oh, that was close. Hey, too damn close. And that damn machine gun near death me. <laughs> it worked, boy. Scared him off real good. <laughs> and they scared me off, too. Wouldn't be surprised if you ain't killed the one you shot at. Who the hell cares? He asked for it. Well, maybe there's more of them. Maybe they'll give chase. But keep your foot down, boy. Oh, boy, it's getting mighty cold in here with the side windows broken. The heater can't compete. Went 
wrong, Lou. You all right? Uh, yeah, I'm okay, but Spanks got it in the arm. Oh. Rat had a machine gun in the cab. Who would believe that, huh? Here, Spanks, let me help you. Come over to the car and let me dress it. Yeah, the slug's still in there. I'll have to see a quack. Not till we're over the state line, Specs. Come on. Let's get you in the car. Feel any better? Oh, not much. But it'll do for a while. I know deep in my guts that something's go wrong. I got guts that don't tell lies. We can't live according to how your guts feel, Specs. What do we do now, Lou? The job's jinxed, so I reckon we'll call it a day. You got a big problem, though. We either go overtake the truck or get off Route 85 by riding back to Vickers. Well, going back's risky. And as soon as Albie gets to the interstate, he'll stop somewhere and call up the highway patrol. We'll be trapped. Yeah, that's the way I figure it. Look, uh, we could follow behind the truck. And as soon as it reaches the highway, we can blast off for the state border. 85's too narrow for overtaking. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Okay, that's the way we'll do it. <laughs> No, just stay well behind him, Lou. We don't want Albie to think we're coming in for a second try. Oh, it's a temptation. If it wasn't for that damn machine gun, I'd do it. You know, something else got me thinking. Huh? Yeah. How are they going to get that damn great truck over a hogtie bridge? Must be crazy to try a thing like that. Remember how it swayed fit to fall down when we drove over? We're coming to the bridge, Alby. Yeah. You're pretty quiet all of a sudden. Something bugging you? Yeah, I was just thinking. How'd those jackers know we were coming this way? Now search me. Only me and you knew about it, boy. And I didn't blab. We weren't followed out of acres and nothing overtook us on the road. Maybe you know the answer, Wally. Why me? You're thinking I tipped them off? I don't know. Somehow they got inside and out. Well, you think what you like, Albie, but I won't let you get me riled. I'm no spy, and you know it. If I was working with them, do you think I'd have gunned the truck back there? More like I'd have stopped and put you down. Yeah. I gotta give you that. Okay, Wally, forget what I said, but how they got to know we were taking Route 85 beats me. Say, you tell Jill. Yeah, sure, but she ain't gonna tell nobody, is she? You can't be sure of that, can you? Ah, oh, look, Jill's a loner. She's got no friends. All she does is sit in that apartment and watch television all night. Sure, she's a good kid. But don't it seem funny that these hijacking started just about the time you and Jill started going out? Well, that's just coincidence, that's all. Coincidences are for the young and the idealistic. I'm too old to trust them. I know you're crazy about her and all, but it won't do no harm to check up on her when we get back. Why, well, I bet you don't even know where she comes from. L.A., she told me. Doing that strike you was on, huh? Why should a pretty girl like Jill come to this neck of the woods? Pretty girl traffic always goes in the opposite direction. Like with the state, station laws, and the phony small-town moralities that go with them. Yeah, well, let's talk about it later, huh? We're coming on to the bridge. Okay, boy, but keep it in mind. Here's where we lose a lot of sweat. Wally slowly edged the truck onto the narrow timber bridge, which was only wide enough to accommodate one vehicle at a time. They could hear the strain of the ancient timbers. The whole structure gently swayed and sagged. Twenty yards out over the gorge, Albie's hand tightly gripped Wally's arm. Stop, Wally! Oh, don't make a fuss, Albie. We can make it. Stop, I said, now! That's better. Well, we can't sit here forever waiting for you to screw up enough courage to go on. We going back. Back up onto terra firma, Wally. That's an order. Now, look, Albie, when I was in Vietnam, I used to drive trucks over worse bridges than this. Yeah, the government paid. Now, you back up, Wally. Okay, you're the boss. I'm glad you remembered. Uh-oh. Wait for it, Albie. We got company. Take a look through your mirror. Oh, hell. Not when we're stuck like this. Now, there's only one way we can go now. Now, look. We stay here. What can they do? Pump a few bullets into the back of the truck? Damage a few video machines? You want us to sit here on the bridge and do nothing? It's getting lighter all the time, boy. Captain Slate will be coming along this way looking for us in his patrol car. 
By sitting here, we got them jerks neatly trapped. They can't risk going back to Vickers, and the road don't lead nowhere else. doing up ahead. Maybe they're stuck. No ways. More like they chickened out of making the crossing. Why don't they back up off that bridge? Like I said, Lou, they're stuck. You know what, honey? They're sitting ducks. I wouldn't mind taking them on. Think of what that load's worth. What'd you reckon, Specs? I just want to quack. You, Jill? Forget it. Okay, I'll do it alone can creep up on them around the side of the truck and then I can take it. Cut the engine, Wally. Somebody's getting out of that automobile. Cut the lights, too. Can you see him? Uh, no. No, he's out of line of sight. I can't see him now, either. Maybe he's planning to take us on again. Ain't learned his lesson. Someone else is getting out of the car. Hey, Elby, where are you going? Shoot them up a bit. Make them keep their distance. I right, hear. Give me that gun and I'll make them wish they'd been born. Elby! Ah, oh! Elby! Damn. Oh. He must have been waiting for that move. Where'd he hit you? My leg. Oh! You stay here. Now, come on. Let go of that gun. You be careful, boy. I'll take the spare magazine. While he'd quietly drop down from the cab and onto the narrow strip of bridge at the side of the truck, the light was strengthening, but... Not yet enough to see the finer details. He padded silently to the rear of the truck and waited, watching for movement. He saw a figure stop at the end of the bridge, raise a machine gun, and fire to burst. <laughs> the vague figure crumpled and disappeared from view. Then there was a sudden movement only a few feet away. Jagger missed, and he was hurled back over the edge of the bridge by a blast from Wally's machine gun. He waited for a while, then walked to the edge of the bridge and looked inside the car. Specs Tiger was propped up in the back seat. He seemed to have lost interest in everything that was happening. Hey, don't shoot that thing at me. I ain't gonna give you no trouble. Did you kill him? Yeah. Your two pals are dead. Pity about Jill. She was a good kid in the wrong company. Jill? What about Jill? I guess you didn't know she was really Lou's wife. What? Yeah. You... And she took quite a shine to you. You, you. you mean to tell me that... With his heart thumping, Wally turned around to where the crumpled body of Jill lay in the stillness of death. Yep, now it all fitted. But he could hardly bring himself to believe it. He was still stooping over her body when I arrived 30 minutes later. managed to back Alby's truck off the bridge. Then I called up Vickers to send an ambulance for the body. I piled old Alby and Spake Steiger in the back of my patrol car. Wally sat beside me as I blasted off the Carrollton. Well, how could she have done a thing like that to me? Well, no accounting for women, son. Quite plain, she preferred Lou Jagger. A promise of wealth for settling down with you. Yeah. Anyway, she was married to him. That must have counted for a lot. She just played you along for information. Oh, she seemed so so sweet and so innocent. <laughs> Don't they all? <laughs> yeah, I know it'll take a while for you to accept the truth. All I can offer is a piece of advice. You stick to hometown girls, son. They're easier to find out about. It took a few weeks before Wally smiled again. Nowadays, he's a full partner in Albie's truck line, and he took my advice. He's married to the prettiest little gal in the state of Tennessee.
high adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.